Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a rather nice gaming laptop from Lenovo that just came out. This is the Legion Y540, and it looks a lot like some of the prior Legions that we've looked at, but internally, they have made some upgrades, and it really performs quite nicely for the price point and the form factor. And we're going to take a closer look at this new laptop in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it gets uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Now there are a number of different configurations for this laptop. So we're going to look at what this one has first, but I'll also tell you about some of the other options that are available as we're going through this. Uh, now this one that we're looking at, we believe costs about $1,459, uh, but you can get one starting at around $899 at the time I'm recording this video. They all have 15.6 inch displays, uh, but this one has a 1080p 144 hertz display running at about 300 nits of brightness. It's IPS, it has a matte finish, nice and sharp. It really looks nice, especially for games that you can get running at high frame rates. And we were quite pleased uh, with how everything looked on here. Uh, I have not seen the 60 hertz display, but my experience with Lenovo displays is that they are very good even at the lower end. Uh, but if you can swing it, having 144 hertz here will really make a difference. This one has an i7-9750H processor. That's a six-core i7 chip. It also has a GTX 1660 Ti GPU. Uh, this is a GPU that I haven't yet encountered, and I was eager to learn more about it. It is based on the new Turing architecture, which NVIDIA has rolled out with their new RTX series cards. But you'll notice here on the front that this one says GTX, and that's because this chip, although based on the new architecture, lacks some of the special visual effects like ray tracing that those RTX cards have, but it does deliver a nice performance boost over the prior generation. And you'll see that when we start working through some benchmarks and games in a few minutes. So if you don't need all those fancy features, I think you can get in the door here at a pretty reasonable price. Uh, this 1660 Ti is even on the base model uh, with six gigabytes of video memory. So it comes very well equipped, I think, for where it is uh, in the marketplace. Now, if you wanted to take advantage of some of those RTX features, they do have a version of the laptop with a 2060 GPU built in, so that's an option for you. Uh, this one came with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in dual channel configuration. The base model starts at eight. It is expandable to 32 if you want to take it apart. It also has an NVMe solid state drive. This one came in with one terabyte of storage and in addition to that NVMe slot inside, you have a full-size 2.5-inch SATA position for a hard drive as well. And they give you a little cable in the box to connect everything up. Uh, we did take it apart on my Extras channel the other day. You can check out that video to see exactly what it looks like inside. It wasn't the easiest laptop to take apart, but once you get in there, it is pretty easy to work on. And the weight on this one is not all that unreasonable. It is 5.1 pounds or 2.3 kilograms. So it's pretty lightweight for a gaming laptop with a GPU on board. Now you've got two speakers in the front here. Uh, sound quality is not great, but you do have nice stereo separation. It is a little on the tinnier side, uh, but of course you can always plug in some headphones into the headphone jack to get a better audio experience. Uh, you have a nice backlit Lenovo keyboard here, nice spacing on the keys, good size keys as well with decent travel, so it was a very uh, nice typing surface. And if you've ever used one of these Lenovo consumer devices before, uh, the keyboard will feel very familiar. And because you've got a 15 inch form factor here, the keyboard deck has room for a number pad and a nice full size arrow key set here as well. So you might be able to make the excuse with your IT department that you can use this for work because it has a number pad on it, right? So you can grab some gaming horsepower to get your Excel documents done. A uh, nice trackpad here. It's not a click pad. You have two buttons here for doing your mouse clicks, but I'm sure a lot of you will probably connect uh, your own mouse to it. It of course supports Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, you have a bunch of connectors on here for those devices too. So on the left-hand side, uh, we have a part of the cooling system here, along with a USB 3 port and a headset, headphone, microphone jack port there. Uh, most of the ports, though, are located here on the back next to the cooling fans. Uh, so you have a, a Kensington lock here for locking it down on a desk. That is helpful in a college environment or a LAN party if you still do those things. So good to see that on there. 
Uh, you have a power connector here for hooking up its power supply. Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI out. Next to that is another USB 3 connector. You have a mini display port out here and then a USB Type-C port. I was surprised that it does not have Thunderbolt. Typically we see Thunderbolt on these devices, but this is just USB-C. Uh, soon they're going to be merging Thunderbolt and USB, but apparently that was not done on this particular laptop. This is regular USB-C. Uh, this port does not do power delivery. It just does video out uh, as well as data in and out. So you have to plug in the power adapter if you are docking it on your desk. Nice little backlight here on the logo. And on the other side, you have another USB 3 port and their reset switch there. And that is pretty much it for the overall hardware. Uh, one other note is the webcam here at the bottom. We've looked at this webcam before. Uh, this is one of those up the nostril kind of cameras. And they did that because they wanted to keep the top bezel uh, relatively thin. Uh, so it's not going to be the best chat environment. Uh, so you might want to look at getting a secondary camera if you do do a lot of web conferencing. So enough of the talk about the laptop. Let's see what it can do. Let's hop into a couple of games now and see how it performs. So let's run some games on this computer. We've got Fortnite up first here. Uh, we had it set to the epic settings. And as you can see, we were getting between 90 and 100 frames per second out of Fortnite. It ran quite nicely. Uh, one thing to note on the display is that it does not support G-Sync in any of the configurations. That would maybe smooth things out a little bit depending on the game that you're running, but overall on the 144 hertz display, we didn't see any tearing because it was often hard to get the games up to that uh, level of frame rate, but we were still seeing frame rates well above 60 in most cases. Uh, Rocket League here at high quality uh, was getting between 240 and 250 frames per second. That game usually runs pretty quick on lower end hardware and here it runs quite nicely so you will have a good Rocket League experience. And on GTA 5 we set some pretty high settings on there and we were getting between 70 and 100 frames per second on that one. Uh, most of the settings that we tried were north of 60. You can certainly spend a lot of time getting GTA 5 tweaked to what works best for you, but we found it ran very, very nicely on this hardware combination. Uh, we also ran The Witcher 3, which can be a very demanding game graphically. Uh, that one was coming in around 70 to 80 frames per second set to Ultra. Uh, so that was a very good result. Uh, so we were pleased with that, of course. And then we ran the new version of Doom, and at the high settings that you can see on screen here, uh, we were getting uh, well over 100 frames per second most of the time sustained. This is a very fast game to begin with, and it ran uh, just beautifully on this 144 hertz display, and I was very pleased overall with the kind of performance that we saw out of this. Uh, my usual daily driver gaming laptop, if you will, is a uh, Alienware 15 that I got about two years ago with a GTX 1070 built in. Uh, this one pretty much matched it in just about everything that we tried, including uh, the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. Let's have a look at that real quick. Uh, we got a score of 5,739, and you can see that lines up quite nicely with my Alienware laptop. Uh, it really bests it on the CPU test because that Alienware, I think, is only running with a, a quad-core processor where this one has two extra cores and, of course, is a new generation chip. Uh, so we are seeing better scores on the CPU portion of that test. And graphically, as you can see, it lines up very, very closely with a GTX 1070. So let's move on to thermal performance. And on the 3 Mark Fire Strike stress test, we got a passing grade of 98%. And you can also see the temperatures of both the CPU and GPU when that test was running. Uh, what it does is it runs one of those 3D benchmarks over and over again to see uh, how well it will perform under constant load. And it looks like this one was able to uh, keep itself going even under load at a consistent level of performance. And it does that, of course, because it has a couple of big fans on it. Uh, the fan noise isn't bad on this. It's just unavoidable, though, on a gaming laptop. Those fans will come on, especially when you're playing a demanding game, and you will hear them. Uh, but it sounded less like a wind tunnel uh, as compared to my Alienware PC, which is often very loud when its fans are cooking. Uh, this one certainly is not quiet, uh, but it is quieter than other gaming laptops I have looked at, including some from Lenovo. So it is a quieter fan, but it will be heard, and there's just no avoiding that. Uh, you certainly also want to keep everything clear uh, while you are gaming to prevent the computer from getting too hot and slowing down because if it does have a fan obstruction, that of course will impact performance. 
Now, battery life on gaming laptops is never good, and this one is no exception to that rule. Uh, you'll be lucky to get maybe five or six hours of battery life out of this thing just doing the basics like browsing the web and doing word processing. Uh, you'll have far less uh, time on that battery when you are gaming uh, just because the GPU and CPU really require a lot of power to deliver the performance that you see on screen. And it's just not feasible to get any kind of real uh, long-term battery life out of this when you're doing some of those really heavy tasks. So don't expect this to be an all day away from the desk kind of device. Keep that power adapter and an outlet for it nearby to be able to use it throughout the workday. So overall, I am quite pleased with the performance we're seeing out of this computer given its price and form factor. And it's good for more than just gaming too. I think this would be a very good video editing platform given the strength of the GPU and CPU inside. Also good for live streaming, really great for photo editing and everything else that you might do that uh, requires a good amount of CPU and graphical horsepower. This one really is delivering all of that and it does have a more professional look than other gaming laptops might have. So I think it's a real winner here, especially if you're looking for something relatively reasonably priced for what's inside. And it looks like the deal they're having right now, which starts at $899, is a really good place to start for a nicely configured computer with a very capable GPU. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.